All right, we'll now talk about our soil taxonomy or soil classification. Uh, I love this picture of a bunch of different monoliths just highlighting how varied and beautiful uh, our soils can be. So we need a way to classify that. And to do that, we use a system that groups soils based on their characteristics. So it starts with the order. We have 12 orders, um, goes to the suborders. We have 63 suborders. 250 great groups, 1,400 subgroups, 8,000 families, 19,000 series. Obviously, I'm not going to require you to know all of these. Um, we can go through how to key one out, but again, that's not a, a skill that you are expected to know. Uh, what I do hope that you take away from this is that soil taxonomy is awesome and very useful, uh, as well as being able to describe the 12 different soil orders and be prepared to... Um, you know, match each order to some key characteristics of it. Uh, and nice thing about soil taxonomy compared to plant taxonomy is that the soil taxonomy, uh, each part tells us uh, something about important characteristics of that soil for management. So um, just an example here, we'll walk through. So we have a mollusol, it's our soil order. We take the OLL from that, and then we go to our suborder, our mollusol has an aquic soil moisture regime. It's just a measure of how much water it gets during the growing season. So we take the AQU and add it to our OLL. So then we have an aqual. And then we have a, our gillic horizon in our aqual. So our gillic is a clay uh, deposit. So then we take the ARGI, so it's an RG aqual. And then in the subgroup category, uh, there's sort of a flow chart of unique characteristics. This one doesn't meet any of those, so it's just a typic RG aqual, a typical RG aqual. And so just in the classification, we know um, that it has clay deposit, a wet soil moisture regime, and it's a mollusol, so it's one of our prairie soils with high organic matter near the surface. So that's how soil taxonomy works and sort of a unique thing compared to plant taxonomy. As I mentioned, we have 12 soil orders. So our highest category, they all end in SOL or SOL. Um, so they are alpha-sol, andosol, eritosol, entosol, gelosol, histosol, and septosol, mollusol, Oxisol, Spodosol, Altosol, and Vertisol. So we'll go through each one of these. So a Gelosol is permanently frozen. These are found in the Arctic and Antarctic, about 9% of the surface of the planet. Our Histosols are high in organic matter. Uh, these are like bogs, peats, wetlands, so really coarse organic matter that hasn't been broken down because uh, they're often saturated. Only about 1% of the soil surface, but very important ecologically. Spodosols are um, identified with the spodic horizon, so this is iron that's leached out and deposited. And this is often has to do with pH, so we find these in coarse soils because we need lots of water movement. And then high pH, acidic, or uh, low pH, and an acidic letter. Um, so often under conifer forests, about 4% of the Earth's surface. Andosols are derived from volcanic materials. A uh, great place to see some andosols is if you ever get to go to Iceland, make sure to check out the soil there. Um, higher, rainfall con con uh, higher rainfall content, but cooler temperatures, about 1% of the Earth's surface. Oxisols are found in tropical and subtropical areas. These are really red, uh, sort of like a typical rainforest soil that you see in pictures. They're red because they're highly weathered, um, so that's clay content and iron left over in the soil, and about 8% of the soil surface. Vertisols, uh, these are expansive clays, which means that the clay presents, they have a high um, chance of shrinking and swelling based on soil moisture. This creates slicken sides, which is a unique uh, soil structure as a result of that clay kind of shrinking and swelling on each other and then sliding. And it's about 2% of the soil surface. These can be found in Texas in the U.S. 
It's probably our best region for them. Up next we have aridosols, so arid. So these are our dry desert soils. They often have limited weathering because of the low moisture and then high salt content because we have water moving up through the soil profile and then evaporating at the surface, leaving behind that salt. And then uh, they cover about 12% of the planet's surface. Altosols are found in humid areas. Uh, they're often acidic and have these clay accumulations, which you can see in the red color, about 8% of the soil surface. Uh, Mollusols, these are our prairie or grassland soils. They're highly fertile due to this very uh, rich and deep organic matter horizon here, which we use to identify them. Alpha sols, uh, moderately weathered, uh, fairly fertile, a lot of our farmland, and um, covers about 10% of the soil surface. Then we have inceptosols, which are slightly weathered, so that means they don't quite have as clear horizon definition, usually fewer horizons, uh, broad characteristics, sort of our teenage soils, geologically speaking. And then our entosols, so these are like our baby soils, or toddler soils, uh, newly formed, very few horizons, if any, uh, often as a result of like floodplains or landslides. So recently deposited and the soil forming factors are clorped, hasn't had very much time to act on them. So then if we go back to our hierarchy of soil taxonomy, then we can put it to use in an example here. We'll do the Wisconsin state soil. Uh, so I'll give you a second to remember what the Wisconsin state soil is. First of all, here's a picture of a profile for it. And as you all remember, it's the Anago Silt Loam. Uh, there's a song about it. If you need help remembering it, you can search online for that. Um, so it's an alphasol, so we take the elf off of that. It has a eudic soil moisture regime, so it's a eudolf. And then it has a glossic horizon here, so it's a gloss eudolf. And the glossic horizon is less than 50 centimeters thick, which makes it a haplic. And it has a frigid uh, soil temperature regime which is just based on how long the soil is cold at a certain depth. So all in all, our Wisconsin state soil, the Anago silt loam, is a frigid haplic gloss udolf. And then we can sort of pick out some horizons here. And so this is what we do first. We'd identify the horizons and then key it out to a frigid haplic gloss udolf. So we're working a little bit backwards, but these are our rough horizon boundaries. Then we have our master horizons. So we don't have an O horizon here. We have an A, and then the small p denotes a plow layer, so AP. And then our light layer here is our zone of eluviation, or E horizon. And then the clay that is eluviated out of here gets deposited into our BT horizon. So the T here denoting a high clay content. And then we switch to a 2BT2. Um, the 2 at the beginning denotes a different parent material. So a lot of times in Wisconsin we see this because there's like a glacial deposit on top of a previous soil um, or maybe a, you know alluvium, colluvium, or loss deposit. So 2BT2, new parent material, high in clay content, 2BT3, so enough to differentiate the horizons, but uh, it's still a BT horizon. And then down here we get into a new parent material that hasn't been weathered. So 3C is our final horizon there. And so again, if we go through our order, orders alpha sol, suborder Udolf, great group, gloss Udolf, subgroup haplic, family frigid. So it's a frigid haplic gloss Udolf.